Thanks, Claire. All right, our next speaker is James Holm. He has, gra what school did you graduate from? Westview High School. He just graduated from Westview High School and will be attending the University of California, Riverside. He will be majoring in neuroscience. His goals are to become a researcher and to make scientific discoveries. It's a good start. In personal life, he enjoys playing soccer and strategy games, and his dream is to own a Slurpee machine. <laughs> <laughs> These kids have been fun to work with this summer. Tiss, tiss. He won't let you show unless you can hear it. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Well, the lab I work in is the Computational Neurobiology Lab, or CNL for short. CNL is very computer oriented. Basically, everybody who works in CNL does programming of some sort. Uh, one division of the lab called MCell does mathematical models of the cell, such as that picture there. There's also computer simulations of hippocampal functions and neural network firings. And the knowledge that's gained is then made available to the public and the scientific community through the web. My mentor, John Jacobson, who works in CNL, is a philosophical type of guy. He's interested in how we perceive reality, specifically grapheme perception. And graphemes are basically just letters of the alphabet. And he wants to know how graphemes are mediated in spatial frequency channels. He also studies subjective experience, which is what takes place inside the mind as opposed to the external world. I've carried on his work in dealing with subjective experience. And I've done it through flash programming Flash is set up to make movies. There's a timeline, which is on the top there. And within the timeline, there are layers. And layers give the movie order and structure. And within the layers, there are frames. And text, images, and code can be placed in the frames to make the movie do things. <laughs> and my main task was to write code. And I was um, writing code to show how our perception of causality can be tricked. And a major way humans learn is through action and effect relationships. And to simulate this on a computer, we have a key press as an action, and the effect is the appearance of an image. And actions and effects have logical progressions through time. That is, effects proceed or seem simultaneous with the actions that cause them, unless we have a temporal order judgment reversal, which I just call the illusion. <laughs> and in the illusion, the effect seems to precede the action that it causes. So subjectively, you're causing events to happen in the past. And to implement this illusion, we insert a series of gradual delays in between the actions and the effects. So we'd have a key press, and then a 10 millisecond delay, and then an image appearing, and then a key press, and then 20 millisecond, and then an image appears. And we keep doing this over and over again. And it would increase up to around 200 milliseconds. And we do this gradual delay incrementations to um, adapt the person to the, modify their perception of time. And then after we modify their perception of time, we completely remove the delay, and this causes the time illusion. And potential applications for this illusion are in reducing car accidents. And it, by, it might be possible to increase the reaction times of drivers. Also, another application is in the entertainment industry, like video games. And uh, my mentor came up with the video game one, not me. So. Gamers might feel like they have a superpower, and that might let them have more fun. <laughs> so. so lastly, I'd like to thank John, CNL, Sloan Center, Homesteaders, and family. If they want to give me an allowance bonus, that's good, too. Like that. <laughs> Any questions? Nope. Oh, you're spinning. Yeah.